What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday. Another week goes by super fast. So I want to do a weekly recap. I'm going to start doing these every single week. So I will start with Monday, work the way to Friday, go over some of the trades today. I know it's 8.39. Uh, market opens at 7.39 or 7.30 here. So it's only a little over an hour into the day. Uh, I'm done for the day. So uh, we'll do a recap and then I'll go over the trades of today. Um, as far as the recap, so this week I wanted to dabble a little bit with options in uh, in my Lightspeed account, and you know, got to admit there is a learning curve with options. So, you know, I think options are something I'm going to like just mess with a little bit, but for the most part, I think I've found a home with trading stocks and and really kind of have my style. So I think I'm going to focus heavily on that. I was just trying to give the options a shot, and um, you know, it's just it's tough. So as far as Monday, I was messing around with uh, some Apple calls, and then I even uh, bought a put on Tesla thinking that maybe there was some downside, and I lost 43 bucks that day. Um, or actually, no, net, I was minus 35, because I lost money on Tesla, I made a little bit of money on Apple, so I was down 35 bucks on Monday. So you know nothing big, really just trying to figure the option game out. Um, so I lost 35 that day. Tuesday ended up, uh, losing $74 messing around with Netflix and Baba and just got stopped out because there's a little bit more weakness um, so took a small loss that day once again learning with the options um, I think that they're a good secondary thing but main I just I'm comfortable with stock and then um, Wednesday I happened to jump back into the trade net account and I made 138 bucks took a short on fossil just gap down on bad news and then I ended up taking a trade on NVIDIA. Uh, I was up a little bit, ended up coming back. And, um, you know, I ended up basically taking a scratch trade on that. So just two trades, $138, and um, and called it a day, trying to realize that, you know, it's August, and I'm trying not to overtrade. If there's not a lot of A-plus stuff, try to hit a few, and then, um, you know, just 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 move on if, if nothing looks, you know, super great. And then I ended up taking a small trade in the Lightspeed account just because I wanted to see if shares were shortable in Fossil. These are the, the 47 bucks right here. Don't mind this. This is, um, these were options on UNG, just more like longer term uh, writing uh, options on this. But I took a little short on Fossil just because I wanted to see if the sh it was shortable because I know uh, I, I was like, I was on Twitter and stuff and noticed some people saying, I think it was Twitter. I'm not sure where I was talking about how sometimes there's not share shortable and certain brokers. I wanted to give it a shot. So I just took a hundred shares of it, made 18 bucks. Um, so, you know, not a big amount, but really just messing around on that. And then um, yesterday ended up making 312 bucks. I took a short on DDS. A lot of the retailers were getting crushed. Took a short there. I made a dollar and 21 cents on that. Then I took a short on Baba. Got a small gain there. I noticed that when I'm, you know, and this is something that I still have to work on. When I take a pretty decent sized green trade right off the bat, I'm super defensive. And sometimes that bites me in the ass because I don't let trades work out to their full potential. You know, I ended up, only ended up taking 20 cents on Baba, another 25 on NVIDIA, and then another 25. So added, you know, some gains to it. But overall, there was a lot more to get. I was just being super defensive on those and getting, you know, quick 20, 25 cent moves and taking them. And I know that, you know, long term, I'll probably be able to make a lot more money if I just try not to be as defensive. Uh, I'm always going to be defensive. That's just my style. But try not to be too emotional about it. And I even was a little too emotional today on a trade and didn't let it completely work out. So I still have a lot of holes in the game. I still have to, to work around that. Um, so now just adding everything up. So between Monday and Tuesday, you know, it was down 109 bucks. Uh, so I made, you know, 128, I went on the back end, I made 128 Wednesday, uh, made 298.50 Thursday, and then today, oh yeah, and then now I'll go over, um, I'll go over today's trades. So today was pretty solid. I know as far as the, the, the stocks that were in play, I really liked Snap and then uh, NVIDIA after their earnings report. And especially with some weakness in the market, I just figured it could be crazy and it's going to be a mover. So I ended up making 252 bucks. I took a short initially on Snap. So um, Snap had a nice move higher. And then the moment that this thing started to roll after a little pop, I took a short just below 
uh, 12. And I figured that this had some, you know, I thought it had a shot to, to at least go down a lot. There was massive amount of size at 12, whether it was shorts covering or also buyers stepping in. It was an unbelievable amount of size on the, the time and sales that was getting filled quickly. So there was huge size. After I saw that, I was hesitant as to where it was even going to go because that was there was a lot of money put to work at 12. Uh, I, and I went a little bit bigger on Snap. I took a short um, and I, I shorted 1,000 shares at 11.98. And then very quickly, I was in the money. And this hit a low of 11.81. So I was up like 170 bucks, but I wanted, I wanted to give it a chance. So I held on. And then the moment that this thing bounced and couldn't break through 11.80 numerous times and then pulled up, you know, I don't want to have to go from green to watching something go red. You know, I know that sometimes you have to let trades work, but I like of, all right, well, it didn't work the way I thought it was going to. Get out for break even or small loss, and then I can always get back in. So I ended up scratching it for a $10 loss, and then I can just reevaluate. While that was going on, I happened to see NVIDIA, and NVIDIA had its first push up. This gray line is the 50-day on the, the daily, um, and this thing pushed up and then rolled over hard. So I ended up taking it short at only 200 shares, small size, because I figured NVIDIA was going to be nuts. I didn't want to put myself at any, you know, get in too big just because I felt like it. So I took a short at 156.06 and super fast got a $1.26 on this, and I covered the position. So I took a short right there just for the break of uh, 156 and then covered the low of this candle was 154.51 started to pop up a bit and I took it off uh, for you know a very fast game I know that I mean getting a dollar and as quick as that trade was I'm good with that so I mean this thing was a minute it moved over a point dollar twenty that to me that's a very emotional move so take it and then I can all and I can reevaluate the problem that I did this next trade so you know focusing on the good and the bad the end of the day, I know that you know I made a little bit of money this week, but regardless of making money, I have to try to constantly tweak and get better, right? Same with everybody watching. If you want to try to become the best you can, you have to constantly critique yourself. So I took a short later on at 9.48. I shorted a video at 156.55. So right there. Once it broke below that 50-day and showed some weakness, here's where I messed up. Being that I was green a decent amount, I was letting the PL make a judgment, I think, based on whether or not you know I wanted to give it time to work out or have to hang in there. And it, it was a little choppy and crazy, so I also didn't want to be in a crowded trade after already having had a couple winners um, or having you know had a big winner prior. And I only took 11 cents on this, so that that's not good. That I had an opportunity to get a real nice winner there. Um, and I shorted it right 156.55. So right there. And then it kind of was just popping around a bit. And I did not let it play out. I ended up taking 11 cents. And I figured, you know, I'm just going to gonna call it a day. You know, it's a Friday. And, you know, let me just be all right with what I got. But at the end of the day, this could have been a much, much larger win. Shorted at 156.55. Had I let this work out, which I'm noticing is a problem, I gotta let things work out more. So you know, it still is a massive weakness of mine. For the most part, I can be pretty consistent as far as direction and setup, but it's it's being able to hang in there if something doesn't work right away. This ended up hitting a low of 153.65. So almost three more points to the downside. I would have never gotten three points, but at the very least, I think I could have held that thing to the whole number of 156 or maybe the flush below 156, maybe take it at the very least, get 50 cents to a dollar on that. And instead, I only took 11 because of me being impatient. So I got to work on that. And then obviously NVIDIA channeled again and uh, and has since broke down. But yeah, just to quickly go over today, 252 bucks. The I'm just assuming that commissions are probably be around $20. So we'll just say a net of 232. The account is at $2,208. So surprisingly enough, I was able to turn things around. After that terrible Netflix trade, I was down like 2,000 bucks in this account. Now after a handful of weeks, I'm up a little over 2,000. So that's you know almost a $4,000 swing from that terrible trade. So I just got to learn to not be an idiot with those trades and I can put together some serious consistency. Need work still. Got a lot of things I need to work on, but overall I can be pretty consistent.
So as far as the week goes, you know, 128 plus the 298.50. Let's just assume that today I made 232. Now let's minus the 108 from the Monday and Tuesday losses. I was messing around with options. Had I not messed around with options, I'm assuming probably one out of the two of those days I could have made money. Could have made money. So from Wednesday to Friday, I made 658 bucks. But we'll minus out those those losses from Lightspeed, and I made 549.50. So let's just call it 550 bucks. So you know, not a huge week, but once again, it's another consistent week. In the days that I stepped outside the options, I made money every single day. So overall, very happy. And it's also August, so I know things tend to slow down. So far, I've seen plenty of opportunities. I haven't seen any slowdown. I've been able to see a ton of stuff setting up and a decent amount of volatility, you know, so far. So hopefully that continues. And then I'm just going to try to just keep on being consistent and avoid the stupidity. Avoid hopping into a trade like Netflix. And if there is an earnings play that's in, that's extreme like that, just stay away. Stay in my court of being able to focus on what I like and what's good and stay away from those dumb gambling trades because outside of that things have been great and also just to kind of show something else i think the reason why you know it, trading full-time can seem great and i want to make a living i think it's also very good to do something else so i know that i talk about me doing ebay on here and then just to kind of mention you know when days in trading sucks or days in you know something else sucks it's always good to have a few things going on because in ebay i happen to have a really good week. I had $1,443 in sales in the last seven days and $3,500 in the last 31 days. So, and this is gross. This is not net. This is gross. So, you know, in the last seven days, I made $1,443 and then making, you know, $550, you know, in the, um, in the trading. So we're looking at almost $2,000 in, um, you know, in, in call it gross revenue between the two businesses. Now, it's not always going to be like that. There are ups and downs. I think if anybody runs their own business or is trying to make their own money, they understand that it's a roller coaster. You have your ups, you have your highs, you have your lows. But especially with trading being so hard, I think it's a really good idea to have at the very least a secondary thing because you know, even though I didn't make a ton this week in trading, I was happy with the consistency. It was nice to be able to look at eBay and know that I was doing pretty well there. So they can try to balance each other out um, as far as, you know, income goes. So just strongly recommend that. Figure out what works for you and try to do a few things. If you put all your eggs in one basket, it can be super stressful. I know when I was trading before doing eBay, I felt super stressed like I had to make money. Now I don't feel like that. And I feel like the results are a little bit better because if a day doesn't look great uh, with trading wise, I don't force anything and I can just close the computers down and say, I'm going to focus the rest of my day on eBay, regardless of how good or bad my day was trading. It's helped me a lot. Maybe it will help others a lot. So just think about that. Or if you're working a full-time job and you can trade around it, whatever it is, have a few things going on in my opinion. So that is it for me. I don't want to make the videos too long. Uh, hopefully your week was good. Happy Friday. Have a good weekend. And I will see you guys later.